and our Girls Gone Bible, baby. Episode two. Let's First go. First of all, we just want to say I, we can't even believe the outpouring messages that we got. We are just over the moon. I mean, I'm truly... I. Everyone always says that, like, I didn't expect this type of support. People have been so unbelievably wonderful about it. And let me tell you, it's one thing to go and put yourself on a pu- public platform and put yourself out there and put your personality and like your thoughts and opinions and all that in a time where it is like pretty scary to have an opinion Mm -hmm, on anything mm -hmm. um but then it's another thing entirely to go and put out literally the most important thing to you ever which is our faith and to open ourselves up to criticism on something like that um and unfortunately no matter how many nice messages you get it is really jarring when you do get something that's not as nice But I will say everything that people have said to us, all the support, all the stories that people have shared, literally being like, I can't believe I found you guys. I feel like you're my my best friends because I've gone through the same thing that you have. Mm -hmm. And I'm just just sharing our stories. I mean, it's incredible. We're just we feel so blessed that we can help people because that's all we're trying to do. True. It's just relatable and help people. So. Thank Love you, you guys Jesus. so much. Thank you, Jesus. He's so cute, and isn't he? Jesus is the cutest. <laughs> He's truly the cutest. All right. So today we want to talk about relationships, relationships. Um, because it's a jungle out there and we already know how difficult it is and how much people are struggling and we want to touch upon some subjects. So on the topic of dating, dating is an interesting beast. It's really especially in these big c- cities like we're in L.A. and yeah, it's really fun to try and have a godly relationship out here. What is uh, your type? What is my type? Yeah. Like personality-wise? Everything. Um, what do you look for in a man? Well, I truly look now mm-hmm. for, uh, and I'm really not just saying this, a, like a God-fearing man. Like he's got to love Jesus. It's my number one requirement. I told you this earlier actually that, I used to have a rule when I was younger that I was like, as long as he's baptized, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. he doesn't have to, I'll take care of the rest. As long as he's baptized, the seed is planted, whatever. Um, That's completely different for me now. I literally can't settle for anyone who doesn't love Jesus as much, if not more, than I do. And not that... And I've had relationships where the guys were were like completely non-believers and they've been great and you know what I mean? And actually, the people who have been like most encouraging of my faith were the non-believers. Isn't that so yeah, interesting? Yeah. Um, and, but I just know now where I'm at, like in a, as, as I get closer to, you know, wanting to start a family and settle down and get married and all that stuff, like I just think about my man's loving Jesus and like raising my kids with somebody who will pray over them so you know what I mean I can't even picture a life with anything else yeah it's like forget about tattoos and muscles like I just like someone no we don't have to forget (laughs) about that (laughs) no but it's like there's nothing that turns me on more than a god like a god-fearing man I mean okay maybe not turns me on but you're just like oh I love that Hey, this is why we're girls on Bible. We're not perfect. <laughs> no, I agree, though. I agree. I always think about, like, I can't even imagine how much I would love a guy who loves Jesus. You know what I mean? What's most important to me, other than that, is somebody with a strong sense of humor. Oh, yeah. You I for can't... sure need that. Yeah. I, I, I just want to laugh. Yeah. I really, I want to have a good time. Banter. Banter. I yeah. need someone, I need someone tough enough who will, you know, it, there has to be the solid... Uh, roast to flirt ratio you know I need him to be able to banter with me but I need him to be strong enough to like get the banter back because guys say that they want to like banter with the girl and then you say one thing and it hurts their feelings you know what I mean yeah um but yeah I just I want to have I I think what I really look for in somebody is somebody who wants to be happy Mm -hmm. and you'd think that everybody wants to be happy but they don't because if you really truly want to be happy you would like take the steps towards having that and a lot of people don't well that's one thing I can say about you is you just exude so much joy because of your faith yeah and yeah I can't even picture you with someone that is less than that is 
yeah. moody that you have to carry yeah carry them through now yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it, like listen everyone's gonna have bad days yeah. obviously and like bad months years even um but i think it's just like the pos- heart position of like trying and like wanting wanting well, to that's be what joyful you do every day you're not perfect but one thing you do have is joy Thanks, i babe. mean even through the hard times you're like okay it's okay yeah you that's, have to i've be... learned that from you big time yeah <laughs> that was sweet <laughs> what else <laughs> what else are you doing as you think <laughs> okay um, what else uh what I do mean, you look for in a guy the same thing. I really like a God fearing man, but I'm not talking about someone who puts, you know, John 18 in their Instagram profile. I'm right. looking for someone who really, you know, Walks exu- with the yeah, you know, um, isn't trolling on the internet for women, has respect, manners, you know, really controls his lust. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Someone that's completely in their masculine. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is probably one of my biggest things too I need a provider and I can take care of myself but someone that makes me feel safe if you make me feel safe I will be the best version of myself 100% so yeah that those are the biggest things for me that really is something that we should talk about is the whole feminine and masculine Mm. situation because um, that's something that I've learned about in the past couple of years Um, And I think it's a topic that is a little weird for people because they're like, I love that women are taking control and and want to have their own. I think that's beautiful. If it's one thing my mother always taught me, it's that you, you know, never rely on anyone for anything because, you know, anyone can pick up and leave. So you always make sure you have your own. So that's why I've always been a worker and always had my own money. Um, but I do believe in the roles. Yeah. Do you I, agree? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, it's funny as I've gotten older, I've started to adopt more like traditional values and beliefs. And I, there are things that society pushes on us that if you're not careful, you'll think is for your benefit, but it's really for your detriment. Like men and women have to coexist harmoniously Mm -hmm. and work together and there has to be like some sort of push and pull like there can't be where are the men what happened and I'm so (laughs) sorry to say this no I really am but I am gonna say it what happened I mean and I don't I don't know who's to blame but I just feel like men don't want to be men anymore i don't know if it's the city we're living in but it's i I feel like we're around a bunch of peter pan (laughs) i'm like what happened to to men and values and family and taking care of their women and just being the man and the and the protector i mean i agree you know and well it's this whole thing of um everybody it's like both genders trying to like be the same thing and trying to one-up each other and we've kind of both done it to each other like women have stepped up being like no I I don't want to be I'm independent and I don't want to be taken care of and don't do that and don't tell me what to do and all that stuff and then men have been like okay well then like how about you pay the bill you know what I mean so we've both done it to each other like we're all to blame no absolutely and and women saying oh I don't need a man I don't need a man for nothing yes we do I say all the time we need men we need each other of course we need exactly we need each other yeah you know you know what there's and I'm not gonna obviously ever name by name and I don't want to break I I always say to our like we need to promote the things that we love instead of talking about the things that we hate because we don't want to put anything toxic or negative out there but like you know there are some for example there are a couple women in the podcast space that I was listening to the other day where they had this whole like episode where they were talking saying that you know, families don't need fathers anymore. Like, kids don't need dads. If we don't have dads in the home, society will fall apart. It's already happening. We need moms. We need dads. We need the family unit. It is the most important thing. Like, we got to get away from this idea that we can all be single, a- alone, away mm-hmm. from each other, and that, like, we don't, we need each other. I agree. I agree. We, we do need men. I d- 
I I don't know. I didn't hear that podcast. I mean, I guess I can say a lot of women are, I guess, so hurt maybe that they are just like, I give up. I'll and just... I get it. I get it completely. Yeah. And and that's the, like, it's like the hurt of the world that just keeps perpetuating yeah. it. And like, I'm sure, of course, it comes from a place of hurt. But I think even though it does, we still can't enable that like type of thinking and behavior because it's it's really, it's bad. We can't enable it now. We, we, we need each other. Yeah, and I, I too like a masculine man. I th- it's the most important thing to me, um, because I am naturally very feminine emotionally. And by the way, when we talk about masculine and feminine, masculine doesn't mean like football players, no. you know, like six five, big fighting everyone. That's not masculinity. No. So, and the idea, sorry, babe, the idea of toxic masculinity can't actually exist because masculinity in and of itself is not toxic. It's the opposite of toxic. It's noble. It's stoic. It's strong. It's like a pillar for the family. It's the most beautiful thing yeah. that needs to be celebrated, encouraged, and like implemented back into our boys, into society. Um, and then femininity doesn't mean just wearing dresses and painting your nails and wear, you know what I mean? Femininity is... It's like spiritual softness, Mm -hmm. nurturing, that like feminine motherly almost instinct to like take care of things and nurture and grow and and it's it's beautiful and it's not weakness. Mm -hmm. You and I are both really feminine and really strong. I know for myself, like I, I truly don't, I'm very far from weak and I'm also really feminine. So that also doesn't mean weakness, Um, but we need those things to coexist together harmoniously. Yeah, and, and being masculine too, it's it's being in tune with your feelings yeah. and you know, not running away and taking charge and, and being a man, stepping up. Yeah, it's stepping up. Yeah. Let me, I will tell you a way I've heard masculinity described that I loved. A masculine man you could describe as like a rock. Like, his emotions are so solid yeah. that nothing can move him. That because, okay, women are so emotional, right? And we can, like, come at a man and with all of our emotions and all of our feelings and we're, it's irrational and whatever and it's, like, all over the place. But because a masculine man is so solid, we come to him and he just solves those problems. He doesn't, like, ignite the fire. He doesn't make it worse. Mm-hmm. He doesn't, like, throw... He doesn't run. Exa- oh, that he absolutely doesn't run like a masculine man sits there and he gives you solutions that's what masculinity is and so if your dude is like yelling at you and making your situation worse that's not him being masculine that's actually a really feminine trait to like not be able to handle your emotions in a man yeah this is so like it's such a touchy thing but I think it's important and we have to we have to talk about it's the things. It's okay. We're, I don't even think we're saying anything bad. This is the I truth. I know. Ari's a lot better with this stuff. I just, I really, truly, from the bottom of my heart, come from a place of love. And Me I, too. And I want things to get better. Like, I want yeah. people to understand. It, women and men are both to blame for this, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Like, they just are. I'm, I'm not, I, I would never talk about men in a, in a negative light. No, no. I love men and our, our women. Oh, I and I, I, we love everybody. <laughs> we love <laughs> women. <laughs> anyway. But I, let's talk about dating while being close to God, because that's what this whole thing is about. Have you noticed a difference in your dating life or the way you approach dating or you approach love since getting close to Jesus? I'm trying to think. I know how they are for you. How? You're the same as me in the sense that um, being close to Jesus really helps you get like a grasp on your emotions and it helps you not be ruled by them because we're aware. Oh, yes, yes. You know, we're aware that God's will is more important than the way that we feel. And the way that we feel uh, ultimately is very deceiving at times, whereas God is always right like he's he's always correct he always knows what we should do and his will is Mm. the right way to go um so i know that makes a big difference right? yeah and i can see things now in people where i couldn't before Mm -hmm. because i'm so close to god now yeah i can see things in people i'm like oh no he gives you discernment i absolutely i have seen a massive change with you i mean you've always been so intuitive and discerning Mm -hmm. but i really have seen like the further your relationship with jesus has progressed you can see things from a mile away Absolutely. that you would have ignored before. Like, and you can, you'll like see it in their eyes. You'll be like, 
something's off. Something's yeah. not right. Yeah. I see. I don't like this seems harmless, but I actually think that this is what's going on underneath. And then you're right. And I'm like, what's going on? over here? You know what I mean? Like, well, do you think about the relationships you were in? I mean, you thought the world of, of whoever you were with. And then you really can see who someone is. It's not in the relationship. It's after, after. the relationship. Mm hmm. I mean, and it's scary. It is scary. You're like, who was I with? That's so scary. That's a, that honestly is one of the most scary, like, parts of, you could be with someone for 40 years and not know who they are. You have to see characteristics now. Yeah. Did I say that right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are we trying to, what are you trying to say? <laughs> what are you trying, you have to see characteristics? Characteristics. Yeah, you said it right. I said character. Did I say it right? You didn't say it. You, what did she say? Okay, so she I didn't say that. Yes, I did. Okay, so I have a thing that I say words wrong. Oh my guys, it's the funniest thing. Oh, the other day, no, 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 no. You have to hear this. So the other day, or when we were going Wait, to stagecoach. Hold coach, on, hold on. Hang on. What are you gonna say? Wait, hang on. When we were going to stagecoach the other day. Oh yeah. We um we're driving and we're listening to this guy T D Jakes. He's a bishop and he does. He's really famous <laughs> and he goes. <laughs> She, his name is Bishop T.D. Jakes, and then all day she's like, put Bishop on, put Bishop <laughs> no, on. I said Bishop. Oh, first she said <laughs> Bishop, and I was like, what did you say? And then later, all day she's saying, put Bishop on, put Bishop on, and then days later she's like, hey, can we listen to Bishop? And then I'm like, who are you talking about? Like, which Bishop? And she goes, the guy from the car, and I was like, you know that's his title and not his name, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. You're you. the best. So, um, what about you? What about me? Um, how has your relationship with Jesus changed with your relationship? Everything. Yeah. Literally everything. Yeah. Um, you know what's funny is my... I think what I'm most in submission to God with in my life is my relationship, my romantic relationships. Because there are other things like you know, career, work, money, social media, like friends, like uh, there's a lot of stuff that I, you know, will stumble and fall and not be obedient, whatever. But when it comes to romantic relationships, I'm like, uh, maybe not at first. There are a couple times where I'm like, hey, Jesus, I like this guy. I think I'm going to date him. And God's like, don't do it. And I'm like, let me just try. And then and you don't do week, that. Yeah. And then like a week later, I'm like, I hear you. I understand when what you you're saying. Prayer. Oh, yeah. I mean, we all know that the <clears throat> ultimate prayer is, God, if they're not for me, get them out of my life. And Like 48 <sighs> hours later, they are out. Yeah. He works quick with that one. He loves <clears throat> that. Yeah. I'm really, really obedient when it comes to my romantic relationships because I truly believe that it's the most important relationship Absolutely. that we have. It encompasses, like, every other relationship or friendship in our life j into one and then add the, like, romantic element that you don't have in any other relationship. Mm -hmm. It's it consumes you and it will dictate the rest of your life, literally. Absolutely. And so when it comes to that, I'm just like, God, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, so last year I felt like God had taken me through a couple of different things that were similar. And I know looking back and I knew in the moment too that he was really growing me in my relationship with him and he was completely ridding me of the... N the need to have control over my life and he was like I don't want you focusing on your feelings and ever again like I want you to be able to focus solely on me and what I want for you and that no matter how strongly you feel for something or somebody I want you at a drop of a hat to like look to me and be like okay if God doesn't want this for me I'm gonna let it go mm -hmm. you know and so we went through that a couple times last year and it really has gotten me to a place of healthy I think I detachment almost like I'm really detached in a good way that if somebody's not for me that's okay you know what I mean yeah I simply cannot try to make anything work that I know isn't for me yeah. I don't get sad over things or guys mm. that aren't for me like you've seen I think that I have a really good thing about me where I am able to think very logically in difficult situations and be like is this my man if this isn't my man why am I going to be sad over mm -hmm. a, a dude who's not my man yeah. you know and so yeah he, being close to Jesus has given me like a power 
it's really, really empowering. Yeah, and I, to uh, piggyback off what you were saying, um, <laughs> you are so... <laughs> Sorry, I've never I... heard you say anything like that. Did you All right. No, it's cute. Can I, I like it as professional. <laughs> she, whenever I'm serious, she can't handle it. No, no, I can. Piggy, um, piggyback. Yeah, you, anyone, you could be with someone for four or five years, think that they, you're going to marry them. Anyone can switch up on you mm-hmm. at any second. So you better never love anyone more than you love yourself. Mm-hmm. And that is a lesson God. that, one of the biggest lessons I learned this year um it, like you talk about detachment mm-hmm. it's so key you you can love and give yourself and but you 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 have to guard your heart absolutely always because anyone can switch up on you they really can yeah i know and that's why when we make that's why it's called making an idol out of something we put it above god into where that's why god says anything that you have in your life that if you lost it tomorrow you wouldn't be okay you've made an idol out of it and that counts for people too yeah. and i just i haven't made it an idol out of somebody in a long long time i don't so much make an idol out of like uh boyfriends as i do friends like i will out of with friends sometimes cuz i love my friends and family yeah, yeah yeah but friends for me like sometimes i'll i'll be i just love them so much like if i love you friends I think, or friends f- friend just one just my only friend <laughs> babe else? you're my I'm only friend kidding. who else um no but yeah. she's not kidding by the way my <laughs> I, i'm gonna be completely vulnerable and Let's honest go. here um you know for me i am so in my feminine that when i love someone i just I've only really loved one person and when I love I give them my all and I I'm just there and for them and their family and devoted that sometimes you do I mean yeah you're not supposed to make an idol but as a woman I don't know in my experience you want to be devoted and you want to be there when they're working and help them and just sometimes you do get lost and you do lose yourself a little bit and um let me tell you so so that's okay but uh, you know people listening it is okay to to be there for people but go ahead tell them one thing i was gonna say one thing ariel ritzma you are oh one of not one of you are literally the greatest woman i've ever met in my life and if i was a guy and i had somebody like you i don't even know how anybody ever like what who in their right mind would ever 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 mess up with you like nobody truly nobody can find it no but i really do feel that way about you and i don't feel that way about (laughs) you (laughs) seriously you're so you're loyal you're devoted you're a good woman you're gonna be such a good wife such a good mom like you you are just the most trustworthy person on the planet and it's not easy to find that in la like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your values are so solid. What you care about, what you believe in, your morals, you're, you're just, like, you're good to your core. I just hope I can find somebody that I love as much as I love you. And I, like, speak, that's facts. I'm not even kidding. I wish Do the you same think thing. we will? We will, right? Yeah. All right. I wonder who God has for us. I'm not even kidding. Sometimes I look around in L.A. and I'm like, every guy here is 45 doing ketamine at the club. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't think that's my husband. I can't. I don't even want to get into these guys. <laughs> it's frightening. It's yo, truly yo, you meet a man who's fifty, and he's, he's like, like, "I'm not ready to have kids." <laughs> he's like, "I'm not ready to settle down," and I'm like, "Bro, what? Go start a family. What are you doing?" It's, it's, like, you go back to where I'm from. I'm from Massachusetts. I said that in the last uh, podcast, but <laughs> that's like the most important thing to people: is their families, their wives. What's your attachment style? Well, I would say it used to be anxious. Um, I think it's how you grew up. Like, growing up, I used to, oh, my mom's not going to like this. Oh, well, I have to be real. You have to be real. Sorry, Roberta, Um, I love you. My mom, I used to have to sort of chase her for love. Wow. You know, she, like, she, yeah. And when I was really nice and loving, she would be like, "Eh." So for me... It used to be anxious, but from spending this past year completely isolated and alone, I would say I'm 
secure now. Mm -hmm. Um, Because anxious is not the way to go. It's a really bad way to be. I mean, I wouldn't say bad, but it's not a fun way to be. No, definitely. Well, and I'm avoidant Mm. and it's obviously completely different, but very similar in the sense that it's not good for you. It's not like a healthy way to be. But you and I are both, I mean, I'm avoidant secure. I, I can be secure. It just depends what situation I'm in. Um, if things are rocky or they're shaky or they're weird, I'm completely avoidant. But for the most part, you and I both have zero trouble expressing our needs and our wants and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what being secure is. But it's so interesting how, you know what's so funny is our childhood literally determines everything. And I never, like in acting class, sometimes we're in the same acting class and greatest class in the world, but sometimes we do these exercises that are... I Which don't ones? know. They're hard for like inner. Uh, ch- I feel. Well, that's like fine. Talking about it's your more. Feelings? Well, yeah, the talking about my feelings is a little hard, but it's like the inner child work and stuff. Like for me, I'm always. They're like you know, picture younger self, and I'm like, she's fine. Like she's okay. That's me being so avoidant with my own feelings that I'm like, she's good. Like I get like that too because we don't want to ever be victims. Right, and I just think yeah, I just believe I don't know. There's sometimes I think there's almost been like an overcorrection of trauma of like we spend a little too much time focusing on it, focusing on it rather than focusing on like the solution to get over it. That's just my two cents. I don't know. That's just that's just what works in my life. But um, yeah, I think that it's really hard when you are dating someone with like a different attachment style than well, you. the anxious and the avoidant usually end up together yeah I typically will end up with someone with anxious attachment and I'm always with avoidance oh that's so funny that you mentioned that because we realized something recently that you typically go for a if you we don't have to keep this in but like that you'll go for like emotionally unavailable guys Mm. and I have never gone gone for an emotionally unavailable guy like, they're typically too overly em- emotionally available. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I wonder why that happens and what the difference in our upbringing or whatever it was. You know what I mean? I know. Like, But avoidance usually don't. I mean, I don't know. Well, I have dated someone who was also avoided and it was absolutely miserable. Well, he was a narcissist. Sorry. <laughs> Is that too much? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Let's get to the questions. Okay, so we got so many questions about, so we'll just answer it in one, about the topic of like being equally and unequally yoked with somebody. And would you date someone who wants to know Jesus but not necessarily Christian yet? What if you both agree spiritually but you notice things that uh, they do that aren't like what you like or what God would want? Um... What do you think? So this goes to values, right? I mean, the most important thing in a relationship is having the same values. Mm-hmm. It's it's key. It's gold. So if you don't have the same values, it's going to be very hard. Yeah. Um, for me, I want someone who's a good person. I know a lot of Christian men that are out, you know, mm-hmm. not being Christian men. So, yes, for me, I need a godly man. It's a non-negotiable for me. But um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the you know greatest people on the planet. Yeah, it doesn't mean they're perfect. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, look, there's there's still good guys out there. You want a good man mm-hmm. who's respectful. Like we were just saying, has manners. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to have a family and you want to take them to church and have them grow up with your values, yeah, you probably want someone that has the same values as you. Yeah. So the Bible talks about how being equally and unequally yoked, it's like we can be friends, obviously, you'd be friends with everybody, but like God encourage us to, encourages us to be friends with non-believers and people of different faith and everybody, and it doesn't matter where their faith is, like we should still embrace them, love them, and be near them, and that doesn't necessarily mean that like being near them will make us come down in our faith. Um, but the one thing that he says is that, the one area that that doesn't apply to is your romantic relationship and especially like who Mm -hmm. you end up marrying like Mm -hmm. he does not want us unequally yoked Mm -hmm. and like I said earlier I used to have a requirement of being baptized and that was enough for me and it's it's just not anymore and it's something that like maybe take to the Lord because and other people were asking like what if you know they're interested in being being close to Jesus what if uh they're willing to learn and like I have dated 
somebody who like literally gave their life to Jesus after meeting me and like and how do you feel about that would you be with someone like that I would I would okay um I would it's not necessarily when I think about my life and what I want just because of where I am that's not what I would love to happen but like what God willing whatever his plan is whoever he wants for me but yeah I think um I just, I mean, and we're also going to talk about headship and male leadership and stuff. I just, I know I really want somebody to pray over me. Like, I imagine that at one point or another in my life, my faith isn't going to be as strong as it is today. And I, I'm sure I'm going to go through hard times like I have in the past, maybe even lose my faith. You literally never know. And like, I need someone to be there who's going to be able to pray for me and bring me back and like carry me and lead me you know what I mean I really don't want to just as a female like I just don't want to carry someone through the faith it's just not what I'm interested if you feel like that's your calling and like you like that and I have liked that in the past I used to love doing that if I'm being honest it just goes back to when you're so deep in your faith you just want someone who's right there with you so it's basically to sum up that question I believe that you need to have the same values yeah I believe that nothing's perfect, but having the same values, I feel that that relationship can last forever if you have the same values. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's something that we're workshopping with you because it's your own journey and you take that to the Lord. And and who knows, maybe there's so many there's countless stories of marrying an unbeliever and then you know, they later come to the faith and stuff like that. And so you never know what God's plan is for you. But I just know for me personally, he's got to love JC. He has to be cool, though. You know what I mean? Not that Christians aren't cool. They're the coolest. I just... If you're not chasing God's heart, you better not be chasing mine. Ooh. (laughs) Let's go, Mark. That's pretty good. Um, Um, So, let's read another question. Should you... Oh, this is something we talked about. Should you wait to be married until you live together? I... uh, mm -hmm. Well, I was just talking about this with you the other day are you texting no I'm looking something up go ahead um I do feel that you really know someone when you live together um I don't think you should rush and live together Mm -hmm. I think you should date and really enjoy each other and yeah I get that and I understand what you say about can I please can I say one more thing yeah yeah but where I am now in my life is I'm not living with anyone until I know they're going to be my husband because I'm not going through that. Mm -hmm. Well, because I agree with you completely that you don't know somebody until you live with them. And it's a massive like change in the relationship and the dynamic of a relationship. I will say. Full transparency, I have lived with a boy from before. I have lived with somebody. I've played house. I've done it all. Um. I don't, I would never do it again. I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think that it's really detrimental to a relationship, but there is a statistic that shows, and it's completely like separate from the Bible. It's not biblical, but studies show that you have a much higher, I don't know what the exact percentage is, but you have a much higher um, chance of getting divorced when you cohabitate together before getting married. And I agree with that. Like I, I get it because you know why? relationships are so hard and they get harder as time goes on and the phenom the whole idea that you won't always be in love as as in love as you were in the beginning is real love changes and it grows and it evolves and so when you move in with somebody it completely changes the dynamic it's really fun at first and I'm sure it all and it can always be fun but it's like at some point you can really run into something difficult when you start to feel like roommates. And I just think that without the commitment of marriage, it's like you move in, you start to feel like roommates, you think you're not in love, let's just break up and we'll go find people we are in love with. And then you do the same thing over and over and over again, because without that commitment, why would you stay? You know what I mean? It's kind of, it's kind of like, I was thinking like our relationship with God, like there are days where I don't feel like I, I know I love God, but there are sometimes I don't feel that fire of loving him, but because I'm committed to him, I'm going to stay on this path to him because I have that commitment and I don't know, but even though I don't always feel that way, you know what I mean? Yeah. For me, I for sure want to wait 
till marriage. I mean, then you see my sister. She's been with her husband now for 10 years. They moved right in together. They have the most incredible relationship. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's for me personally, it's preference. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's just that's my two cents on it. I wouldn't do it yeah. again and I, I don't plan on it. Yeah. And um, and it's a lot too. When you're going to you're going to move in with someone, it, that's that's a big deal. I mean, you better know that that's going to be your guy. Yeah, for sure. Because that's going to be hard. Yeah, he better be paying the rent, though. Being joyful in singleness. I, I, okay, so this was the first time I really spent time alone. Yeah. Like, alone, alone. And it was so hard. I mean, I, yeah, it was really hard, but... I can't even tell you how much I found myself through that mm-hmm. and how much it changed me as a person yeah. and as a woman. And let me tell you, because I was so isolated and I spent that time alone, I don't need anyone for anything. I know. And that is priceless. And that's when you attract the right person. So true. There's so much joy in being single. There really yeah. is. Um, just think about it. I always, whenever I am in a relationship, because ultimately, obviously it does pull you from God a little bit. It has to, like, you can't help it. I will oftentimes in a relationship be like, God, I wish that that time I was single, how much free time I had to spend with God. I wish I like cherished it more. You know what I mean? And don't worry about anything because God will provide you and he will bring you your person when it's time. Exactly. Don't ever worry. Somebody asked, what is your view on male leadership in a relationship? This is one of my favorite conversations, and it's a touchy subject, but we're going to be just completely open and honest. And I just want everyone to remember that just because something, someone believes in something that you don't doesn't necessarily mean that anybody's wrong. As Different things work for different people. There's something called uh, biblical submission, and it's wives submitting to their husbands and in a time like today that's such a crazy concept for people and trust me if I heard something like that years ago I'd be like someone leading me you know what I mean like I would have such an attitude about Mm -hmm. it the closer I've gotten to God the more and nobody's told me to feel this way nobody's pushed this on me the more I realize that this is actually what God designed and it actually is right and I truly believe that there can't be two leaders in a relationship like somebody's got to steer the ship and there can't be two captains honestly I and I know for me personally like I feel like I'm a leader I'm really confident in my ability to do life well and make decisions and lead myself so I, I don't need to be led but I want to be led yeah and, and that's when you're your most feminine yeah beautiful self as exactly a woman. Exactly. And so they're, you know, it's biblical for wives to submit to their husbands, but we submit to our husbands and our men because they are worthy of submitting to and never submit to a man who is not truly submitted to God, first of all. And I know for me, I have... They need to make you feel safe and protected in order for you to actually submit to them. Yeah, Let's not forget that. Um, and and this is the thing about submission too that people forget is like people think um, men leading their wives is kind of like asserting their dominance like being dominant and people will be like oh women have it so hard like men get to be the leaders and do this I truly believe that men have the short end of the stick when it comes to that men are supposed to love their wives the way that Christ loved the church do you know what Christ did for the church he died like you literally have to be willing to die for your wife and your family Mm -hmm. all of your boyish selfish desires needs wants all of it doesn't matter like it's out the window Mm -hmm. and your family comes first yeah it's christ-like sacrifice it's really it's a lot it's heavy okay someone said i think there's a misconception that if we know god we can't have fun the opposite right if we know god we can't have fun. yeah people think that like being close to jesus means that you live like a really strict like lame life no. no we have fun let me tell you i've lived a lot of different lives my life close to jesus has been the most fun i have such a i am literally like i don't drink i don't smoke i don't do anything 
honestly, my life is a little boring at times because I don't go out. Like, I don't, what I, I have so much fun. You have more fun than anyone drunk at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I have such a good time. I, like, being close to Jesus is fun. Oh, wait, I have a good one. <laughs> How to introduce your significant other to religion without being overbearing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm definitely overbearing. <laughs> One time, a guy called me. I mean, it, you know, it's funny. He was the most religious guy that I've dated. But, you know, he said to me after, I think we got into, like, an argument or something. And he was like, oh, yeah, well, something, something. You're weirdly religious. <laughs> yeah, but it's beautiful. That's why we go back to values. You need to be with someone on your level. Oh, yeah, 100%. When to know if God wants you to give them another chance, struggling with that now. Well, hmm. is the guy going to prove that he should have another chance? Right. You yeah. know, when a guy, everyone screws up. If a guy fights for you and shows that he has really done wrong and wants to prove that to you, I believe in second chances, of course. That's beautiful. I really like that. I know I'm warming up to the idea of second chances a little bit, but I think too, you just, you take it to God. You, you know, you really spend time in prayer and see. You do. Um, That's the most important thing. And yeah. And never forget that God will always bring you peace. So whenever you're feeling confusion, it's not from God. If someone is trying to come back into your life and it's weird and you fits anxiety and it's confusion and it's like, I don't know if someone comes back in your life and it's like, you feel a peace about it. Mm -hmm. It's from God. So For just sure. listen, listen to your gut, which I and think listen, is the Holy Spirit. And listen, relationships are never easy. Mm -hmm. You know, that you're going to have your ups and downs. You're going to go through horrible things. It's, it's about who will stick by you through that. Exactly. Really. How to fight off lust. <laughs> Take it away. It's just all about self-control, and we go back to the same thing with a man. Having self-control over social media, having self-control over the thousands of women half naked, naked on Instagram. <laughs> you know, it's self-control. Yeah, for sure. And I think when you... Go ahead, what do you... <laughs> what do I think? No, I... I yeah, I mean, it's self-control is everything. If you can have self-control, then... yeah. For sure. I mean, it's something to bring to God. I'm telling you guys, we're, I'm going to have a whole, we're going to have a whole uh, podcast episode on um, secular music because one of the main ways that lust will come into your heart, and I know that's so lame to say that, like the spirit of lust, whatever, it's real and it's not good for you, even though it might feel good in the mo it might feel good to feel it, it might feel good to act on it, like it's not a good thing and um the number one way that like lust can enter your heart is through your eyes and through your ears, the things you're watching and the things you're listening to yeah. and what you're taking in and the social media and the women and the guys and like all this stuff. And so you just, you bring it to God, you have self-control and like you just be aware of it um, and just be careful because it's a slippery slope. And trust me, not Mother Teresa, neither of us, like we have to... Um, you have to be careful. You have to be careful with everything. You do. Somebody asked, do you split the bill on the first date? No. no. Um, don't even offer. Don't even pretend to like reach. No. You, you know what you don't do? Don't even get me upset right now. You sit back, you smile, you say thank you, and that's it. And you know what? And if they aren't like so much in their masculine to deal with that, stay back, stay feminine. They'll grow into it. Like it's, yeah. it'll be awkward for a second, but let's be real boys and girls we're not playing this game is that what they're doing i don't know that's not what i'm doing that's not been my never, experience I've but i've heard of it that, but listen relationships are hard dating is interesting um add the component of like trying to live a life with christ even weirder do your best you know what actually before we go somebody said something in here about um sorry guys let me just get it because it's important. How do you handle regrets of past relationships and choices that you've made? Here's the thing about regrets and past. I've done so many things in my life that I regret. I've done a lot of things that I have to carry with me. I've done things, you know, there are things that I did last year that I don't align with now. There are things that I did yesterday that I don't align with today. And the beauty of being 
one with Jesus is that every single day we are a new creation. Every single day we're made new in Christ. And nobody, including yourself, including the enemy, can hold your past against you. Because the day that you give your life to Jesus, you every single day, his grace is new, his forgiveness is new, and you're made new. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to live with any of that. No. no matter who tries to bring it back up, even your own mind that tries to remind you of the shame and the guilt and whatever. You know, so don't even live with regrets. Have everything be a learning lesson. That's the beauty of life is that we don't have to live in a space of feeling guilt and shame to where we don't, you know, let ourselves grow. And this is also the thing about regrets is that people hate to see you change. It's so weird, but like nobody, the truth is nobody wants to see you grow. They don't want to see you get better. So people will constantly remind you of your past. Even you will remind yourself of your past, but that's not you anymore. And Jesus, by the way, always saw you as the holy, blameless, pure, angelic creation that he intended you to be, even when you were doing things that you regret and, you know, no longer align with. Yeah. And it's about taking accountability, too. When you take accountability for what you've done and you own it and you forgive yourself, I think you have no you should have no regrets truly yeah and i mean we're not perfect at all but we really do try to live a very truthful honest life exactly with people with everyone in our lives and you know it's just it's a it's a walk it's a journey you get better every day you as long as you're close to jesus like he knew guys there's scripture that says while we were while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He was on the cross and they nailed his hands and they put him up there and mm. they, he died on the cross knowing that we were going to go against him, sin, deny him, reject him, betray him. He knew all of that and he died for us still because he loves us that much. He knew when he formed us in our mother's womb that we were going to get out here and act foolish and do things yeah. that we shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. And not saying that it's okay at all, but like he loves us and he just wants a relationship with us. So as long as you stay close to him every single day, you fall, you do something you don't like, you know, you do something you regret, you learn from it. Try not to do it again. You do it again. I don't care if you do it a hundred times. Mm -hmm. Try again. You just try. And don't let anybody tell you that just because you keep messing up or that you've messed up that you can't, that, that you're, you're not. That you're not good. good. Yeah. I think that's really why we started this podcast. Yeah. You know, I've just stopped seeing you know so much, you know, I get it. You know, <laughs> guys, we love you so much. God you. bless you. God bless you. Thank you for all the kind messages. Seriously, you are what keeps it. We're talking to our millions of fans. No, no seriously, like you, a anyone who's ever commented something kind, we see everything, especially like on TikTok and stuff. I see every single thing and it's genuinely what keeps me doing this thing. I remember for a long time, God had been pressing in on me, being like, I want you to start speaking. I want you to start making videos. I want, and I literally, full transparency, I was like, I don't want to because I don't want to behave. Like, I really don't. I don't want to change how I dress, how I act, how I talk, how I post. Like, I'm not interested in that type of responsibility. And I just feel like I kept hearing God be like, you have big dreams, right? I gave you those dreams, but I'm not going to help you fulfill and make those dreams come true until you prove to me that I can trust you. And you're not proving to me that I can trust you with the way that you're acting and be, you know what I mean? And then, uh, if I can't trust you with this, how can I trust you with something so much bigger? Mm -hmm. And so I literally was like, okay, God, stop posting thirst traps. <laughs> Except for the one the other day. Morgan, do you know something I don't know? What did I post the other day? Did I post a thirst trap? Yeah. No. You do every day with your videos. Just all right. No. All right. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. Guys, God bless. Thank we you. love God you. Bless you. Read We're the Bible. So Sorry. Am I a Bible yeah. thumper? We're Jesus freaks. Freaks. <gasps> yo, yo, somebody, what did somebody <laughs> say to me the other night? I'm not even kidding. We were out somewhere and this guy goes, he, he, he saw my crosses and he was like, oh, you're religious, whatever. And then I said that I don't drink. And, were, and this guy looks at me and goes, 
are you one of those sober religious freaks? Yeah, I go those, those sober religious Jesus freaks. I go, that's the best compliment. I was I've like, that's the best had. thing anyone's ever said to me. I, he literally could have been. You're so beautiful. I was like, oh my gosh, I am. We are sober religious freaks. She's kind of sober, not really. Love you. Love you. <laughs>